Approximately 12 years ago, the biggest story everyone was talking about was the confirmation for the existence of the so-called Higgs boson. A particle originally predicted back in the 60s by the physicist Peter Higgs. And back then, a lot of media started to refer to this as the discovery of the God's particle, or basically a confirmation for something super super important. Even though Peter Higgs himself, who actually won the Nobel Prize for this a year later, basically disagreed with all of the hype, suggesting that it wasn't really a big deal. And the truth is that he was right. It's really not a big deal, and media made it sound a lot more important than it truly was, especially because many explanations suggested that this is basically how the mass is created. Or in other words, Higgs boson is responsible for forming mass in all of the particles. According to many different articles I read, approximately 12 years ago. But as I've clarified in previous videos, and we'll actually do this again in this video, that's not entirely correct. Although the reason I wanted to start with this boson is because something really important was once again just discovered about this unusual particle, and that discovery seems to be a little bit more important. It might suggest that there is some kind of a misunderstanding with the current model of physics, and there might be evidence for what's known as supersymmetry, the idea that might actually explain a lot of problems in physics, including dark matter. But I guess let's take baby steps. So hello wonderful person, this is Anton, today we're going to discuss Higgs boson once again, and I actually wanted to relate this to the previous video that you might want to explore about this as well, because they are kind of connected. All of the relevant videos are in the description below. But first, I guess a brief reminder about what this unusual particle is, and what it means for physics. And so in essence, the way to understand this particle is by imagining everything around us, or basically the entire universe, as a kind of a collection of different fields. Now to make this easier, we're going to imagine this as a two-dimensional field. And every time these fields become excited by something, or basically they produce a kind of a wave, this results in one of the fundamental particles that then form all of the matter around us. And according to modern physics, there are quite a lot of these fields that are each responsible for different types of particles, and some of them are able to interact with one another, whereas others seem to be more or less individual. And so basically, for every single subatomic particle, there is an equivalent field that explains how these particles form. Any kind of excitation in each of these fields produces individual particles. And one of these fields is known as the Higgs field. This is what Peter Higgs predicted back in the 60s. And he basically tried to explain that some of the mass in certain particles is actually formed when they interact with this unusual Higgs field, which basically acts as a kind of a, well, I guess, molasses. This is one of the better explanations I've heard before, and is usually the one used in textbooks. I couldn't find a video for molasses, but here's a video of honey. So basically here, as various types of particles interact with this very unusually gooey field, the field starts to produce its own particles because of the interaction, which are now referred to as Higgs bosons. But they're extremely unstable and disappear in a fraction of a second. Nevertheless, their existence, or their appearance and disappearance, essentially explained how things like quarks, different types of leptons, and several other types of bosons were able to acquire mass. So for example, as quarks interact with this Higgs field, the appearance of these Higgs bosons makes them acquire that extra energy, which then gives them mass. And this was a pretty important discovery because it basically explained the mass for particles that we couldn't really explain before. But this wasn't an explanation for all of the mass. As a matter of fact, this is actually really important. Almost all of the mass around us, and the stuff that basically forms all of the gravity, and even the stuff that kind of holds everything together, is not actually from the Higgs field. And instead is a result of what's known as chromodynamic binding energy. Or basically the energy that holds all of the quarks together inside, for example, a typical proton. Now this is sort of beyond the point of this video, and you can learn more about this in the previous video in the description, but the idea is that Higgs boson was crucial for physicists, but not super crucial, and was definitely not some kind of a god particle. But there are actually other reasons to study Higgs boson, and other reasons to try to understand it better, not just for scientists studying particles, but actually for cosmologists as well. And this relates to the idea of existence of the universe and the eventual fate of the universe. Now here things get a little bit more intriguing. This relates to that video I mentioned about the so-called false vacuum decay, but in the standard model of physics, Higgs boson is actually used as an explanation for why the universe suddenly expanded during inflation and that the universe may not be in a permanent state. Currently, it might be in a higher energy state, meaning that at some point it might collapse into another state, in essence kind of ending all of us, all at once, instantly. 
we're not even going to know. So check out that video about false vacuum decay if you want to understand why these studies are maybe kind of important. I mean, in terms of just understanding what's going to happen to us. Uh, I guess quick side note, it's unlikely to happen anytime soon. So yeah, you should probably still go to school or work tomorrow. But anyway, so let's talk about this recent study and some of the recent discoveries. And this is once again from pretty much similar experiments from the facilities like CERN in Switzerland that basically hosts the world's largest particle collider. And so here, the researchers behind the study in a description collected a lot of data between approximately 2015 and 2018, mostly focusing on trying to discover if there were other additional appearances and disappearances of this unusual particle that could maybe teach us something else. And one of the reasons they want to do this is because Higgs boson, when it basically creates that mass from interacting with other particles, it only exists for a tiny fraction of a second and then decays into something else. But it seems to decay into different things at all times. Sometimes into gluons, W bosons, Z bosons, photons, leptons, and basically a bunch of other stuff. And that's of course based on the theoretical predictions. But one of the rarest types of decay, predicted by scientists, would result in a production of a photon and a Z boson. An intriguing particle that's sort of responsible for some of the weak force. And according to the predictions, this should happen 15 times every 10,000 decays. Making this basically the rarest type of decay. But turns out when they measured everything, it was over 2 times higher, 34 times every 10,000 decays. With a standard deviation of 3.4, which doesn't actually prove this to be super correct yet, but does present us with a new mystery. The mystery being that there might be a problem with modern predictions, and more importantly, the standard model seems to be lacking something, especially when it comes to explaining certain types of bosons. But I guess even more intriguingly for some physicists studying other types of models, it potentially hints at what's known as supersymmetry. The idea of existence of even more particles, symmetrical particles, that we still have not discovered, with quite a lot of them explaining many mysteries we have today. For example, it could explain the very large difference between the weak force and gravity, or basically why gravity seems to be so extremely weak, or why certain predictions, including Higgs boson and its apparent mass, seem to be incorrect. But even more importantly, it seems to predict an existence of four more particles known as neutralinos, not to be confused with neutrinos or neutrons, which, assuming that they do exist, have been directly used to explain dark matter. But the problem with this idea of supersymmetry is that right now this is still a highly unproven theory of physics that's more or less just theoretical, not really based on evidence. And so basically, at least for now, this is more or less just speculation. Nevertheless, just the discovery from this particular study already suggests that something seems to be off. And that something might be in regards to, of course, new particles, or our misunderstanding of Higgs boson, which might be a little bit more complicated. But honestly, for me personally, one of the main reasons I'm always kind of curious about this particular particle is just the fact that it's been sort of used as a predictor for both the beginning and the end of the universe. Or basically, what some of the modern theories kind of suggest is that the appearance of this Higgs field in the beginning might have dramatically expanded the universe, the inflation era, but it might have been just temporary. This might happen again, and thus the universe might transform into something entirely different with time. We obviously have no idea what exactly is going to be, or even when and if it happens, but currently these are actually the best explanations we have that sort of explain the past and the future. And once again, you can learn more about this in that video about so-called false vacuum decay, a really fascinating concept that's maybe just a little bit scary as well. Anyway, at least for now, that's kind of all I wanted to mention. In conclusion, there's basically some kind of a new unexplained discovery in regards to Higgs boson, and nobody really knows what it is just yet. Once we know more, I'll come back and talk more about this. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the show on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the one for person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.